Okay, so we're going to do uh, this painting here, the, this watercolor painting. A few things that I mentioned that you might need is if you had a, a slightly larger brush, a lot of us have been working with a brush that's maybe like this big. So if you have a larger brush like this one, that's kind of a cool thing. There are even larger brushes like this big. That moves a lot of water around the paper. That's a helpful thing. A few things that this watercolor painting um, is helpful with is there's about five different rules, four or five different rules I have in watercolor painting. Uh, first thing is that you generally do the light stuff first. And so this painting will help facilitate that. Another thing is that you generally do the stuff in the back first. This painting will help facilitate that. Uh, another one is you try to do the largest stuff first. This painting will also help facilitate that. Um, and so those are some of the things we're trying to do and that's common to most all watercolor paintings. That's why I usually start out with this painting um, because it, it does all of those things. Another one is uh, has to do with concentration of watercolor paint. Um, we try to do the stuff that has the least amount of pigment in it first. Um, and this painting will help facilitate that as well. So this is the, the painting that we're going to be doing. Um, and I'll refer back to this one so we can kind of see where we are. So if we're going to follow that, that rule of doing kind of the big stuff first uh, on this painting, we're going to do the big stuff is the sky is pretty big. Um, also, it happens to be fairly light. It happens to be in the very, very back. Um, it's fairly light on the pigment, so, so this is a real plus. Uh, so doing this part of the painting right here, the sky portion, um, doing that first, I think that would be a good deal. Um, we're going to then kind of jump. We're going to do the water after that. Um, it, it is big, it is light, but it happens to be in front. So I'm going to break my rule. Once I start my rule, I'm going to break it for you guys immediately. Um, so just to let you know that we can kind of do that. So here's the deal. When you're... Um, in this particular technique that we're going to be using, we're going to be using a lot of wet into wet stuff first. That means we're going to put down put down a layer of water, and then we're going to dump some pigment into it, and then the pigment's going to move around in the water. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is going to be the sky, and you probably remember from the pictures there, the sky has, it's kind of a sunset or something like that. Um, maybe it's a sunrise, I'm not sure. So I'm going to paint half of my painting, half of the space, with just water. That's what I'm putting down right here. You can't see it really well, but you will in just a second. So this is just water, and that's where that bigger brush is going to come in handy. Now, one of the lightest pigments that we have uh, is yellow. And we wanted a sunset thing, so we do want some yellow in here. And so now I'm just going to take and I'm going to dab, dab some, some yellow in here. Now you can see that starts to starts to come in here and you can see how the water started to spread it out a little bit. It's like, oh, that's kind of a cool deal um, with putting some yellow in there, the yellow from the sun. And we want it to kind of spread. You can kind of dapple it in like that. And so that's some yellow. You can kind of see that. Now, it's also um, at sunset you or sunrise, you also just, you don't have just straight yellow. Uh, you probably transitions a little bit and so I'm going to put some oranges in here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and keep the the yellow more in the middle and, and some of these oranges I'm going to put over to the outside a little and you'll notice when you hit it it starts to spread across the area and so that's going to do some uh, kind of some effects that might maybe you might think about clouds or something where where you have a variety of different values on the on the paper and so this is hit and it started to spread a little bit, started to move out. Now I want to have a continuation of the, the values here and uh, colors. So this is some red that I'm putting in here. And it's more towards the outside edge. I think I want a little bit more yellow. I want it a little more dominant in here. Oh, this has got some serious yellow coming in here. And so that's going to make some some good effects and the water will blend it for you you don't have to just go brush stroke brush stroke brush stroke back and forth and back and forth that's not what we're trying to do what we're trying to do is get um, the pigment to hit the water and then spread out a little bit 
And that's what our goal is. Um, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to do, this is, uh, there's some purple. I, I think that uh, complementary colors are really good in, in paintings. And so this is, area is predominantly yellow. The complement of yellow is purple. And so if we have just a hint of the purple in here, not a ton, it will probably work pretty well for us. This is just water coming back in here, defining that edge. This got a little bit too much there. This is some red. This is a little bit of orange. So that should make a really colorful sky is what we want. We want some good colors in there. The idea is this. A lot of times, you're, you're probably not going to see a sky this dramatic in, in its colors, but we're not interested in what true reality is in this one. We want to make it more idealized, and so that's where we have a little bit of our goal. I see a spot there that's dry, and I want to hit that. Now, you can also do this. If you come back with a little water and you drop some water in, just straight up water, a lot of times that will chase the color away which is kind of, make kind of a cloud effect. So now you, you see it's not overworked. It's just water, and then you see the paint that started to, to move out into the water itself, into the water puddle. Um, this is called wet into wet, and so it's a moving, flowing pigment sort of uh, uh, effect that we're after on that. And that's step number one. What I have to do now is i got to let it dry. I want to put in the water, but it's got to come right up to this edge. And so if I put it in here, all the blue is going to run right into this yellow part. So I have to let this part dry. And that's kind of the deal on this uh, particular painting, is, is you do all that wet into wet stuff. you got to let it dry before you can go on to the next phase. That's where if you're working on a second painting, uh, you can uh, be working on that while this is drying. Set it off the side and you'll be good to go.